I was watching a documentary about China's largest factory the other day. I was surprised at the enormous, gigantic nature of this city. The storyteller told us about how this city is as big as Monaco. I don't know what that is, but it houses 23,000 employees. Filled to capacity, this would be like Nyayo Stadium on a good football match day. The storyteller was trying to explain to us how a young girl had applied to go and work at this factory called EUPA that manufactures for the top brands of irons, grills, and coffee makers. And this girl was applying to go and study there so that she could be guaranteed an entry into the factory city. So we follow her story and she gets in to the school. She leaves her family and comes in, as in and is integrated into this factory city. Her life changes completely. She's guaranteed employment. She's given the skills she needs and her life just fills with opportunities automatically. When I thought about UEPA and the opportunities it gives to its youth in China, I was challenged and wondered whether in Africa we have a similar city. I mean, 1.2 billion people in Africa, 75% of our youth being, uh, of our population being the youth, needing free education and employment opportunities. It would only make sense if we also had a factory city. Google turned out to be very disappointing for me. The only factories that I found were actually made by Japanese here. And the first person that I saw was in Ethiopia with their garment factory. So actually it was put up by the Chinese with investments from many other countries. And so I wondered, what does it take to put together a factory city? I mean, in my house, I have two eight-year-old boys who are twins and their brother who's six. We're constantly making things. Paper jets are the order of the day. And I wondered if I asked my sons, what would it take for Africa to have its first factory city? I bet they'd be very eager to answer. They'd say something like, mommy, it's very simple. All you need is land. And then you need to put up floors and walls and electricity and your factory will start running as long as you know what you want to create there. Simple enough. If I was a factory manager, of course, I would create safety pins. I digress. When I was growing up, I had to change my siblings' nappies. This is before diapers became commonplace. Safety pins were very important in that era. If you lost one, you are going to be in a lot of trouble. So when I discovered that Africa actually imports its safety pins, its undergarments, and even needles, I was really worried for the future of our generations. Now, if I was to take the same question and ask my children, fast forward 30 years, they're now working as technocrats and have become adults, fully respected. I wonder what they would say. What would it take for Africa to have its first Af uh, factory city? I'm sure they would start by saying how complex it is and how they would need to write a paper that would inform the authorities on whether this idea is feasible. Then they would need consultants who would have to put the drawings together. And those consultants would need to submit those drawings to another bigger committee who would probably have to go to Mombasa, sit by the ocean and think whether this was a good idea. Very tiring. This is how things never get done in Africa anywhere in the world really. Too much bureaucracy just limits the power of creativity. It is my desire to see 
the Made in Africa label become a reality one day before I die. And so I was very excited to see the masks that we're now donning that have African print that make everything look so much colorful, so, so much more beautiful. I mean, with our masks, Corona becomes not just that big monster, but it becomes an opportunity for us to show our creativity. Africa is blessed with the greatest minds. It has the best creators, the best innovators, the best of the makers. But still, we've been unable to come together and create this one label called Made in Africa. One of my favorite African sayings is that it takes a village to raise a child. Of course, if you are born in Africa, you understand exactly what that means. Lots and lots of discipline from people who are not even your parents. But for me, what that means is that for something important to come to life, you need to collaborate. You see, I've been a collaborator all my life, so you can take my word for it that collaboration makes things work. I started this collaboration a long time ago. When I was in high school, I joined everything that I could to ensure that I had the opportunities to help me get through my four years of school. I was in every study group, whether it was geography, history, biology, everything. And then I used the same approach to help me through my four years of campus. I climbed, repelled down rocks. <laughs> I even went out of the country to go and minister with my group of drama and sing, singing teams. I managed to do all this because I was in groups. All my studies were also done in groups. And that's how I managed to complete my university. When I graduated, I was employed. And after I'd reached the top of my career, a friend of mine told me, where else are you going to go? You're never gonna get the title CEO. Why don't you come? Let's see whether we can start a business together. And so I did, collaboration. However, like any other woman entrepreneur, I thought, that entrepreneurship was the easy way out. I thought that gone are the days that I was going to be working long hours for my boss and I was now going to be able to manage my job as well as take care of my family, run home and do homework, script every knee that had been, wash every knee that had been scraped. I was very surprised. I was so shocked when I became an entrepreneur. I worked harder than I had ever worked before. Entrepreneurship has had me on a journey that I wouldn't wish on anyone. And yet, it's the most fulfilling thing that I've done in my life. I remember the three times that I've almost closed my business. I remember the nights that I've stayed up awake wondering where salaries were going to come from. I remember trying to come up with a letter to give to the bank so that they could allow me <laughs> to take an overdraft facility. Well, I know these are not unique stories to anybody. All of us in business have gone through this. So, the only way that I've managed to stay in business is when I was invited by a group of my friends into a new space called the Sandbox. What the Sandbox is, is revolutionary for me. Because you see, the tech space has always had incubators, accelerators for, for their startups. But for businessmen and women, there's never been a space that allows us to actually sit and collaborate, to share rent, to ask each other questions that would help us move forward. And so that's what the Sandbox does. It takes this village formula of coming together to surround a newborn business and helps it to 
have life. When I'm at the sandbox, I don't need to worry about rent or paying for coffee or all of those costs are already catered for in our communal budget. But more than that, what I'm grateful for is the ability to walk over to my colleagues who are peers in the professional service industry that has become so difficult to procure when you're a young business. I mean, when was the last time you took up legal services from a professional? I'm not talking about Google. I'm talking about a real professional who you're not sweating to figure out where, how you're going to pay for, the, for their services. You see, professional services are required to help businesses to grow and to scale. But they're out of reach for those same businesses that are so young. So I'm putting up my website again for the third time, reviving it, refreshing it, so that I can be able to get more businesses. But I currently don't have enough funds to go and get a professional website designer. Luckily for me at the Sandbox, I can walk over to Alex and ask him if we can butter services. Alex, I need a new website. What are the odds of you helping me to create one by the end of the month? He's right next door to me. I don't have to drive out of my comfort zone to go and look for him. Alex would be like, May I've actually been looking for somebody to help me with some copywriting for a newsletter that I'm doing. And if you can exchange services with me, we can butter. I can do for you your website and you do for me the newsletter writing. And isn't that how work is supposed to be? I believe that if all of us use this concept of collaboration, wherever we are, our businesses would be able to survive their fifth birthday. I believe strongly that we would be able to create multi-generational businesses that would help us to break the economic barriers that we currently have in Africa. You see, I know that my forefathers fought for our independence and I respect and applaud them for that. But there's still a second war that needs to be won. We need to free ourselves from economic, for, for, from economic, empower ourselves economically. And the only way we can do this is if we find like-minded people like I have at the Sandbox, which is open to be duplicated across the entire planet, really, but mostly across Africa. Because when you're here, you'll be able to use your experience. With my 10 years, I can help another business to grow as fast and to become bigger by the time they hit their 10th birthday. I believe that entrepreneurship is our solution to breaking that barrier. That label made in Africa will be a reality if we all stay the course as entrepreneurs. I don't want anybody to quit entrepreneurship. I'm encouraging you to stay the course and to collaborate wherever you are. Find a way to learn how to scale so that you can hire more people, so that you can be able to be a solution for your country and our continent. In my line of work, I amplify stories of successful African businesses. I'm encouraging you to allow me to share your story. Do this for your children and your children will thank you. If you don't do it for them, at least do it for me. It's a new dawn in Africa. Arise, create and collaborate. Thank you.